Oil rigs, like many large structures, are made up of so many joints and bolts that one wrong move in construction could lead to disaster. Whether it's just an overlooked accident or a company trying to be cheap, the results are the same, with innocent people ultimately paying the price. Today, we'll take a look at how over a hundred people were caught off guard, trying to relax after a hard day's work. Let's talk about what happened to the Alexander Keeland oil rig disaster. A drilling rig is an integrated system that drills wells such as water and oil. They're massive structures, found on land or on a bed of water, full of equipment and a crew operating it every day. The Alexander oil rig was a semi-submersible mobile rig built at the French shipyard in July of 1976. When acquired by Stavanger Drilling, the rig was not used right away as a drilling operation, but rather as living quarters for offshore workers. By 1978, additional blocks had been added to the rig to accommodate up to 386 people. At the time of the incident, the rig was housing workers from Platform Ada 27C, an oil and gas reservoir located in the Ecofisk oil field in the North Sea. In the evening of March 27, 1980, the Alexander rig was housing 212 men who were off duty from a long day of work. The weather was rainy with a dense fog and a wind that was blowing up to 40 knots. It was setting a gloomy mood for what was to come, but everyone was just trying to relax. Even as the waves rose up to 12 meters high against the platform, it was business as usual. Around 6.30 p.m., the workers heard a sharp crack and felt a trembling, something you never want to feel when in the middle of the ocean. Before anything could be done, the whole rig began to tilt over, but swiftly stabilized before completely capsizing. The crew was shaken, but they weren't safe yet. Five of the six anchor cables keeping the rig upright had just snapped, and it was now hanging on by a thread. Slowly, the rig continued to tilt, until at 6.53 p.m., the last cable gave way and the structure fell into the water. 130 workers were trapped in the mess hall and the cinema when the rig went down. The rig had seven 50-man lifeboats and 20 20-man rafts, so it was equipped with enough to get everyone out, but they had to be in working order. Four lifeboats were launched, but only one released from the rig, and it was emerging from the depths upside down. Escaping workers were able to push it upright, and only 19 men were able to climb on board. Only two of the rafts were launched, and only three men were able to get to safety on them. Meanwhile, the Ada platform was doing what they could to help, launching two 12-man rafts and managing to save 13 workers. Seven more were pulled to safety from the Ada platform, but there were still so many sinking in the rig. Of the 212 workers who were on the rig, 123 were still trapped within, and no matter how much help arrived, they weren't emerging. They never would. And this went down in Norwegian history as the worst offshore disaster since World War II and the deadliest rig disaster up until that time. The men on board had families who, for the longest time, wouldn't have answers as to what happened. They wanted to know who was to blame for this. So, an investigation was launched in March of 1981, and the result was less than soothing. A fatigue crack was found in one of the six bracings connected to the collapsed D-leg. The crack was traced back to a weak weld that connected a non-load-bearing plate to the bracing, and this was not the only point of weakness in the build. An investigation uncovered a considerable amount of tearings and cold cracks in the welds. In a sea rig like this, a few cracks are expected, but there were too many to be caused by battering waves, and paint over the cracks suggested these formed during construction, and no one said anything. It was concluded that the structure was flawed from the beginning, and one crack led to a chain reaction of stresses that resulted in the collapse. 
Like many disasters covered on this channel, this tragedy resulted in improved safety standards too little too late. North Sea offshore installations tightened their command organization, identifying a clear authority who would order abandonment in case of emergency. A major contributor to how many were lost was how botched the lifeboats were. This led to the installation of release hooks on oil rigs. Now, even if the hooks are under load, they can fall away in case of emergency. While these improvements are a welcome change, it's unfortunate when loss has to take place for them to happen. The families of the 123 were not given closure. They were not given explanations. They were not given apologies from who contributed to this disaster. We still don't have a solid party as to who to point fingers at, and no real consequences came for the inadequate construction. To the families of the lost, this has to be maddening, and I hope in time you find your answers. Thanks for watching. For more true crime and horror, please consider subscribing. Game with me on Twitch, four days a week. Follow me on Twitter, and as always, be well. <laughs>